Let me tell you a little bit the story about mm. myself. So it was uh, back in 2000, end of 2008, beginning of 2009, where when I decided to change my life. So back then, mm. I was looking totally different. I, I had a totally different mindset, uh, different habits, different routines, and I was not looking the way I'm looking uh, currently. I saw so, some of those pictures. Yeah. So basically, if I wanted to sit here in front of you, I had to be be a little bit away from the table because I had this huge tummy mm. and uh, I was really overweight. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I decided to, you know, to change my life and I managed to lose 40 kilos. Wow. And since then, I have been fortunate enough, you know, to, to, live, yeah, to live a different life and... Uh, um, it was the best decision of my life. My name is Mutai Khan and you're watching Khan Vision. Today's guest is Coach Surush. Surush is going to share some of his experiences that has helped his clients to get into better shape. So without any further ado, let's hear it from him. Hey, it has been uh, a long time before I made my last podcast, so sorry guys, uh, I will try to be more active in this regard, but um, you know, it's life, a lot of things happen, I got married and you know. A lot has happened. Yes, changed workplaces and, and whatnot, but you know. Hey, we're back here, so don't complain, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Motari, what, it was just a few weeks ago when you got married, actually. Uh, about two months two, now. Yeah, two, two months has already gone. Yes. Oh my God, time there, flies. You know, there are some people that they have like month anniversary, two month anniversary yeah. and so on and so forth. That's a bit weird, but you know, yeah. each to their own, you know, yeah. different people have different styles. Yeah. But today we're not going to talk about wedding or wedding traditions. We're going to talk about fitness and that's right oh where's my manner i forgot to introduce you so we have coach surush here uh give it up for him i will uh, request you to tell us a little bit about yourself first for sure for sure first of all thank you so much Motari, for having me today here on your podcast so my name is coach surush and i'm a fat loss uh, expert or fitness expert and uh helping basically uh, busy professionals to get into their best shape of their life that's a very specific niche that you already like uh, explained because i think loads of people are very very busy and yeah that's one of the biggest reasons i don't have time to work out i don't have time to cook that's correct and how does uh, do you do online coaching or face one-on-one -on -one coaching or how does it work well, I used to do a lot of, uh, basically that's how I started my uh, career in fitness. So I was, I was doing face-to-face -face coaching, one-on-one um, -on -one. One -on -one personal trainings um, at different gyms. But then it was a few years ago when I decided to change my coaching strategy and I actually shift, shifted the whole thing into online. And since then I have been just coaching online. So I help people online regardless of where they are living at, basically. A little bit about the online thing. Uh, your uh, clients, basically, yeah. or customers, are yeah. they all from Finland or abroad? Uh, the majority are from Finland. And I, I assume that it's just because, you know, we are living in Finland mm. and I have, I've helped so many people in Finland. So through, you know, word of mouth. Word of mouth Mm -hmm. They have been recommending me to, they have been kind enough to recommend me to their friends, families. So for that reason, you know, uh, majority of the clients, they are from Finland. But no, I have, I have customers from all over the globe. So, uh, you know, uh, even from Canada. Okay. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like you said uh, in, the, in the, the very first sentence, you said you are a fat loss expert. Yeah. And uh, you have a bit of a story about fat loss or you have a, a different kind of a relationship with fat. How did you lose your fat or what's your story? Yeah, how, how did this all happen? All right. All right. <laughs> that, that's correct. So 
Let me tell you a little bit the story about mm. myself. So it was uh, back in 2000, end of 2008, beginning of 2009, where when I decided to change my life. So back then, mm. I was looking totally different. I, I had a totally different mindset, uh, different habits, different routines, and I was not looking the way I'm looking uh, currently. I saw so, some of those pictures. Yeah. So basically, if I wanted to sit here in front of you, I had to be be a little bit away from the table because I had this huge tummy mm. and uh, I was really overweight. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I decided to, you know, to change my life and I managed to lose 40 kilos. Wow. And since then, I have been fortunate enough, you know, to, to, live, yeah, to live a different life and... Uh, um, it was the best decision of my life. What made you change? Was it a single idea or did you have something in your uh, back in your mind that, hey, I need to get rid of this or... Yeah. Yes. What made you change that overall? Yeah. So if I want to think about the reason, kind mm. of like what was the what was the motivation behind the whole change or did you see someone like an iconic figure and you're like ah, damn that guy looks nice I'm i mean gonna... i mean obviously you know you see people that they they are good looking they are they are in a great shape and mm. that's that happens i i, I believe to everyone mm. but to me that was not the only thing i kept telling everyone after starting my whole fat loss uh, journey journey trans body transformation i kept telling everyone that you know it is because of health reason it is because i want to be healthy obviously that was one reason but now as a grown up i could mm. i could talk more frankly and I, I could say that maybe that was not the main reason behind the whole thing behind the whole story and i could say that the real motivation when i dig deep i say that it was mainly um, the fact that I wanted to increase my self-esteem and self-confidence because, mm. you know, as a teenager, young guy, um, I remember well that, uh, you know, usually, Motari, I'm, I'm a person that I like to smile. You, you see me usually, you know... Um, with a big smile on my face. Always. <laughs> that's that's something And that's that, very yeah. nice, you know. Every time I see you, it's, I get a good vi vibe Thanks, and it's, it's really nice to see people smiling. I appreciate it. I, I always try to keep that, maintain that positive attitude. And back in the days, even though I was smiling, but I remember that there was still behind my smile, there was something holding me back. Mm. And it was that low self-confidence. Mm. I remember well that uh, I was living in India, first of all, uh, that time. And I remember well that every time I went to the beach, I went on the beach and I was ashamed of, of myself to take off my T-shirt and just go for a swim because I had this big belly. And even though, as I'm saying, even though I was, I was happy, but from inside, I was not really that happy because I wanted something that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So I, I say that more, even though, as I said, even though it was like for healthy reasons, but, but more than that, let's be honest, mm. it was, I wanted to look great. I wanted to, to feel great mm. so that I can have that, you know, high, high self confidence. Mm. And one day I said that, Hey, you know, the only thing I should be doing is basically to get started. Mm. And Luckily, I took the first step. I changed my life, and here. Prior I to am. that, yeah. Prior to the first step, yeah. Did you exercise any sports, or did you do anything? Did you have any hobbies that you were, you know, physically active? So, when I was a kid, obviously I was very active. I used to play a lot of football. I even mm. played in a team and uh, I was not overweight back then. Mm. But I think that everything started when I when I went to high school and... Uh, more sitting and less more running. More sitting and less, less activities. Mm. And then I started university. And again, um, all the activities like sports and everything, it changed to uh, more like 
partying and nightlife and all those stuff mm. you know so it changed the, the healthy habits it changed to more unhealthy habits and uh, and I was also struggling from eating disorders mm. so a combination of both it really kind of you know it really worth uh, worked against me and mm. it gave me all those extra kilos what kind of uh, eating disorder did you have um, how how would you explain that well um you know when you're talking about eating disorders mm. it could be it could be a combination of many different basically mm. um eating disorders i personally i struggled from uh, mostly from binge eating but uh you know there are there are people that they have you know a combination of binge eating um uh, stress eating or mm. different kind but i remember well that uh you know these memories that they are very kind of sad when i look back at them mm. i used to buy a jar of nutella oh. <laughs> and go there open it take a spoon have the first spoon and i could never stop mm. i had to eat the whole jar I had to eat the whole jar. I can relate to that. I mean, over, uh, the overall thing that, hey, I'm just going to have a couple scoop of ice cream and then you eat, end up eating the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, it it never gave me, you know, good feeling. It always, you know, I remember well, I kept eating with that sense of guilt that, uh, that I am actually, uh, you know, I'm doing something bad and uh but i kept eating it i kept eating it and after that you know it was you can feel worse i was full of guilt and i felt terrible and it was just terrible i could say that and um it's not easy motari to to get rid of eating disorders yeah it's, it's really be. hard i i think i do a little bit of a stress eating yeah uh whenever i feel very stressed then i just want some kind of a comfort and yeah i think uh food is one of the most comfortable thing yeah. especially good ta- good yeah. food like uh fast food or any kind of a desserts yeah and bench eating yeah it's it's a very hard thing to control what was your first step you were talking about you took the first step and how how would you describe the first step So the first step was that I hired a coach. That mm. was the first step. Because um usually when you want to start mm. um I've realized that the only thing that people are lacking is not really the knowledge. Mm. Even though many people they think that the knowledge is what it is holding them back, mm. but it is not really the case. I mean, especially these days Everybody knows that you need to eat well and exercise pretty and, much. And like let's face it, information is like it's just within your reach. It's everywhere. Like it's just enough that you Google, you know, YouTube. training program. You want two days a week, two days training program, three times a week training program or then nutrition program. You just Google and you get a lot of information. So our challenge or my challenge was definitely not, you know, lack of information but it was the accountability Execu- oh, okay. accountability. accountability so that that I, when i start someone holds me accountable mm. so that i can keep going so that i can actually follow the program mm. it really doesn't matter is it a good program or is it the best program if you don't follow it mm. it doesn't matter if it is the best program you would never get any result But mm. if it is just the okay program and if you follow it every single day I promise that it will change your body your life. So that's what I did. I hired a coach who could help me, you know, or who could uh, hold me accountable and that's how I changed my life. Uh, in one year I remember because that's one question that comes up regularly from yes. from my clients. Hey Suresh, how long did it take for you? It took me one year to lose that 40 kilos and uh wow, that's uh That's a healthy 10 year old that you lost from your body. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> 40 I agree. kilos. Yeah. I agree. And when I think about it, I say, damn, if I would have never taken that first step, my life would have been 
totally different today. It would yeah. have been totally different because, uh, well, you know, I have a small daughter now. Mm. She's four and a half years old. And uh, I love playing with her every mm. single day. You know, we do all, all kinds of stuff. Mm. And sometimes I think that if I would have not taken that first step, mm. you know, obviously my situation, it was not similar to 10 years ago. Mm. It, was, it was worse. I mean, you either, you either improve it's hard to maintain. Let's let's face it. It's it's hard to maintain. At that stage, you either start gaining more weight, so your 40 kilos. After sometimes it's going to be 45. It's going to be 50, and then you end up with so many tens, ten tens of kilos extra. Or then, luckily like me, you go the right path. So nowadays I play a lot with my daughter, and it's all because of that first step. When you went to your coach, did you say that, hey, I want to look like this model over here, you know, or what was the goal? Was the goal just to get rid of the fat or, you know, gain some muscle or both at the same time? Um, or how did you approach the coach? Good question. Good question. So <laughs> actually, uh, the coach was a good friend of mine. Mm. And I remember I, I went to the gym mm. And I said that, hey, I, I want to get into a, into a better shape. Mm. And they said, okay, what do you want? I remember I started thinking and then there was a picture on the wall. And it was this young guy fit with six packs. And I said, shredded. Yeah, shredded. <laughs> then I said that, I want to look like that. Can I have one of those, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Give me your like the basket and yeah. go and check out. <laughs> yeah. Then he said, all right, let's get into work then. Okay, your yeah. your friend was probably in a good shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. He was. He was definitely in a good shape, and uh, yeah, I was. Then I remember I went to gym every single day, and uh, it obviously it was difficult at the beginning because you don't see any results immediately. I mean, you would see results like within the mm. first few weeks. You would definitely see yeah. results, but not that picture on yeah, the wall. Yeah, of course. You know, not that picture. <laughs> but it was hard because changing habits, mm. it's hard. Mm. You know, it's not about seeing the result, but it's more like changing all those habits that you used to sit in front of TV and open the Nutella jar and eat the whole thing, or then grabbing one kilo of ice cream and eating the whole thing, or then having every night pizzas, burgers, this, that, you know, changing those habits are um, where I think the most difficult. Mm. But that's why, you know, having someone to, to actually support you, to hold you accountable is very, very important. Yeah. Otherwise, the first day you, you give up, you know, there is no one asking you, hey, Surush, you know, because it's a very personal question. Hey, yeah. what did you eat today? Yeah. I, mean, like, I can't just go to you and say, hey, did you eat this or this? But yeah. if we have like a relationship of a trainee or co a coach and uh, someone who is yeah. being coached, yeah. then you can ask these questions, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What was yeah. the... Do you remember what did he say, tell you first? Did he tell you to do the workouts or did he like change your diet plans? What, what kind of a diet did you have that time? Um, How did it change? Well, um, obviously, um, he gave me a training program with a nutrition program. And uh, I used to work out every single day uh, for each session, one hour. Mm. And uh, the nutrition program was, you know, just the standard healthy way of eating, you know, uh, four to five meals and uh, each meal had you know protein carbohydrate mm. you know um, healthy fats and uh, so it was just a standard way of you know healthy eating mm. and uh, I'm really lucky to actually you know ha have that approach back in the days because instead of having two radical changes exactly exactly yeah. because Nowadays, I see all different kind of trends within the fitness industry, you know, that the, the nutrition program is so aggressive mm. in a way that either the amount of calories are so low mm. or then you're not eating real food or then, you know, 
you are restricted in terms of you know some some type of foods you you cannot eat let's say zero carb you cannot eat any carbs mm. or then zero fat you cannot eat any fats or you know these kind of aggressive um, moves m- moves or mm. uh, programs uh, which are not consistent mm. i always tell my clients that a good nutrition program is a program that when I put Realistic. it in front of you, mm. when I put it in front of you, you say, oh, Coach Surush, this is very easy. I can do this for the rest of my life. Mm. This is a good program. Mm. You know, if you see it and you say, oh, my God, this is hard. Mm. It doesn't mean that it's actually a good program because if it ends, if mm. I tell you, hey, follow this program for the next three months, mm. if it has some sort of ending date. Mm. It means that it's not a good program because what happens after it ends? Mm. You fall back. You need to do something. When it, when it ends, you need to... Well, it ends. What do you do? You go to your old habits. Mm. That's why many people start some aggressive diets. They lose some amount of weight or fat and then they gain it back. Mm. Because the diet is very aggressive and it has a lot of restrictions and they cannot keep it forever. Mm. That's the reason. So you do like a more micro uh, changes to the diet and you change the diet throughout the course. Exactly. The, the mm. whole idea, it doesn't need to change. Mm. All right. The amounts, of course, it could be altered. Mm. It could be changed. That's a, that's a different thing. Mm. Uh, but the idea, it doesn't need to change. Mm. You, you So... I have uh, I have tried all sort of diets because mm. I believe that as a coach myself, uh, I have to be aware. I have, I have to be aware, and I mm. have to I have to try it myself so that I can I can talk about it with my yes. customers, with my clients. When they say, when my clients say, "Hey, Suresh, I want to do a keto diet," mm. what do you think? If I have never tried it, if I no matter how much I have read about keto diet. It's the one thing to know, like go yeah, through. Exactly. Like, when I go through it, I can talk about it in a much more professional way. I I, I know all the advantages, disadvantages, all the all the mm, you know things cons about and it. pros. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I've tried, you know, everything: intermittent fasting, ketos, zero carb, zero sugar, zero fat, zero this, all uh, detox, mm. um, and honestly, the best is just the. Uh, standard healthy way of eating a, a, a nutrition plan where you're having everything mm. but in a right amount i think a lot of the times people forget also that you know the youtubers or these uh, celebrity fitness people that put the their workouts and meals uh, or they talk about their special workouts or or special meals they forget that they have a different goal than every day you know, like a person like me who likes to work out and stay, you know, relatively healthy compared to someone who's going to a competition. Yeah. And and it's not forever. The competition is not until I die. Exactly. I need to look the best shape of my life. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. And, and also there is the other thing that it's not so interesting to know, hey, I just eat, you know, normal food like everyone else does. We want to hear you know, shocking things from these heroes, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Did you fall back on your diets? Like, did many, you, the, times. many times. Many times. And but what's the goal that, that I'm going to eat like this until the end of my life, or pretty much like every at day? At the beginning. Yeah. No, no, no. At the beginning, it's too early for anyone to even imagine themselves. You know, with with their future body with their future you know eating habits it's too early and usually i can see it with my clients they cannot even see themselves how how are they going to look like after let's say six months or how are they going to eat after six months it is so hard and Mm. you know if i could say that if anyone wants to take the first step and change their life don't get stuck in these kind of things and just get it started because it's Mm. just too hard to kind of think about all these things you need to get it started you need to just get it started and things would happen of course you know you would fall back you would you would 
you would fail, you have all these days that, you know, you you actually eat terrible and mm. uh, and you can't follow your diet, but that's not where we should put our focus. Mm. A lot of the time we are very hard on ourselves, like, oh, you know, and, yeah. and then we continue making the same it doesn't even help i'm hard on myself and i'm still eating the the bad food or doing the bad behavior yeah it, it doesn't make sense <laughs> now that i think about my uh, past behavior yeah um yeah but, uh, one thing that i want to mention is that you know uh because you you ask me that hey did you also you know uh fall back uh, when you were following your nutrition program um yes as i said yes and one thing that you should be doing because you're gonna like there is no way that every single day you would be 100 out of 100 oh, yeah 100 <laughs> out of 100 and you would be eating healthy come mm. on like we are all human and we know that we're gonna make mistake mm. and uh so we have to accept this this is a fact that is gonna happen to everyone out there and your approach mm. towards it is very important. Mm. Your approach, how you're actually facing those times that you are, you are, you know, you're cheating or you are failing, if we can call it failure, mm. uh, which I, I, I don't see it that way. Uh, you know, your approach is very important. Mm. When you, when you actually in the evening, when you have a piece of cake and you're not supposed to eat that. Mm. If you the next day, if you just sit and uh, have that guilt and feel guilty and um, you know hold yourself back, it doesn't help. But you're you you're losing that day too. Yeah. So what I always tell my mm. client is that first of all, forgive yourself because there is that guilt. You know, yes. you start you know um, kind of doubting yourself, yeah. and it's terrible when you doubt yourself. Mm. that's one of the reason many people they give up because they start doubting their, their uh, themselves and so, it's very uncomfortable position to be in you know, exactly I, yeah and, and they try to okay what if i don't think about this anymore so it's easier yeah, i don't have to yeah, feel yeah. terrible about myself yeah or then as i said just accept it as a fact that all right hey you know shit happens mm. i made this ma mistake it's okay i am going to forgive myself and then the next thing is forget it all right so forgive yourself and forget it why you need to forget it is because you want to have a fresh start you want to you okay you have lost you have missed yesterday evening it cannot be the reason why to not perform your best today i mean it makes all sense now that you say it this way but when, when you are talking when we are talking to ourselves yeah. in, in the mind it's it's just so much worse in many ways i know there, there is no one checking what kind of a conversation you're having yeah so uh, again it comes back to the to the this topic of having someone by mm. your side to support you and it it happens to all my clients that you know a client send me a report because i do a daily check, check. on my mm. on my uh, clients they have to send me daily reports they have to send me their food pictures nutrition updates workout updates daily and i check it out i give them my feedback and i see it all the time that you know a client uh, you know is down hey you know coach i you know yesterday was my son's birthday and i had this pizza and you know uh, i had a pizza yesterday anyway <laughs> yeah so what i say i said hey it's all right forgive yourself forget it and now 100 percent back on track Mm. Right. So as long as you do not give up, you stand up and you keep going forward, there is no failure. That's why I said that I don't believe in failure, because if you don't, if you don't stop, you would never fail, basically. So food is one of the biggest thing or one of the first thing. And I think hardest thing, because there, there might be people who will go to the gym consistently but food is, but you go to the gym once in a day or a few times in a week, but you eat food every day. That's correct. And that's why it's one of the hardest part, would you say? I would say so, yeah. Is it sure. hardest for you as well? Because you train and... Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I say so. You have to make a lot of 
decisions throughout the day. Am I going to have that candy or not? Am I going to have milk and sugar with my coffee or not? For sure, for sure. And uh, in a funny way, uh, always when I take care of my workouts, mm. it's much easier to stay also committed with the nutrition program because mm. in, a, in a strange way, when I do my exercises, somehow my commitment level to eat <clears throat> healthier is also higher. I understand that because when I come back from the gym, I feel like, okay, now I have to eat more salad and yeah. less, you know, like fatty stuff and more lean meat or yeah. protein source. Yeah. But does it get easier other than after you come from the workouts and, and, and so on and so forth? But the whole question that yeah. are you going to have the candy or cake, does it get easier, the decision making? I mean, it gets easier, but the challenge is always there. Yeah, the challenge is always there. It's always I there. See. So uh, talking about the food, and you have had loads of clients, obviously, I'm not going to ask because it's a very personal information to your business. Yeah. But you, whenever you make the, fit, uh, the food plan for your client, clients, yeah. What are the most common things that you do? There must be something common, changes, a, a very common changes that you make regarding when they eat or what they eat yeah. or how much they eat. So what are the common things in Finland? Because <laughs> yeah. most of your clients are from Finland. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me ask you a question mm. that whenever you decide to get fit... Mm. I'm talking about like Motari. Yeah. I'm talking about yourself. Whenever you decide to get fit, what is the number one thing that actually you change within your nutrition? What 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 is what is the challenge that you have that you try to fix it in order to get result? What is it for you? The biggest challenge, I think the amount of food I eat and also the things that I don't need, but I'm having, you know, candy and yeah. uh, uh, sugar. Uh, loads of calories and things like that exactly yeah. exactly so it's the same for everyone so mm. anyone so usually my customers mm. as i said at the beginning they want to lose weight they want to burn fat and their biggest challenge so the the common mistake or the common challenge within that within within these uh, customers is the fact that they are overeating it's so simple when you're when you're overweight, it means that you are consuming more calories than what you should be eating. So they mm -hmm. are eating too many calories, and um, the foods, they, the the food sources, they are not um, really um, from healthy sources. A lot of, uh, let's say, processed processed foods, mm. and um, you know the quality of foods they are they are not that great so that's the challenge with many of many yeah of the especially people. in finland uh, it's very common that people have a lot of processed food like ready-made food you just put it in the microwave yes uh i'm also thinking that while well, you don't take the whole cheesecake away from from the diet plan all the sweets and and the nice stuff you don't take the everything out from there or do you what do, how do you change them well, uh, as I mentioned mm. earlier, you know, a good nutrition program, in my opinion, mm. you know, it's a program that it's a plan that you can do it forever. Mm. So if a plan does not have any, let's say, a dessert or let's say a burger or a pizza, mm. it means that, again, you have restrictions and let's face it, you want to have sometimes this kind of fun food, mm. this kind of comforting food, mm. yeah? Some color in your life. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, definitely I consider those days mm. as well, those meals. And it's all about balancing your calories, mm. you know? So if you, if uh, in the evening time you want to have, let's say, a burger, if you plan it, it's very easy to have control. All right. So you know that you want to have a burger in the evening. You know that you're going to consume more calories in the evening. Uh, you know, there are different approaches. You could you could, let's say, cancel some of your snacks throughout the day or you could you could have a lighter uh, lunch mm. so that you earn the right to have a bigger meal later in the evening. Mm. All right. So it's all about balancing the calories. Obviously, you could have 
you could have desserts you could have you know those kind of those kind of foods that actually you fancy mm. but you should learn how to balance it out and how much you're eating again all right mm. i mean i could i could eat um, nutella mm. today but i don't need to eat the whole jar mm. if mm. i eat the whole jar it doesn't matter how many times i go to the gym mm. i'm going to go back to the old habits and i'm going to get back that 40 kilos mm. that's uh. for sure I understand. Do you have yourself uh, personally? Do you have like a cheat days? That I, okay, this day I'm just gonna go out like Rocky, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. John, John Dwayne. Yeah, he has like a crazy yeah cheat days. <laughs> well, do you plan them out or? Yeah, obviously I would plan them out, mm. and uh, I I would say that I would rather have cheat meals mm. than cheat day. Cheat day, like if you imagine like a whole day cheating. It's just too much. And you won't feel good uh, in the end of the day, I, yeah. I bet. And and we are talking about ordinary people like me and you, mm. right? So ordinary people like me and you, we are not we are not training hardcore twice a day, seven days a week. Mm. We are just hitting the gym, you know, three, four, five times uh, max yeah. a week, all right? And so the amount of activities, it's not crazy high. Mm. And... Honestly, we mm. don't deserve to have a whole day, a full day of cheating. We, yeah. we, we we just don't deserve it. Like, it's just too much. Because one full day, one out of seven, it's, I mean, it's 15, 16%. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, if if you forget about 15%, it's it's some amount of, you know, number. So it's already a lot. Mm. I think so. I personally go with the cheat meal. Mm. I would enjoy the meal, and after that, I'm back on track. How often do you have them? I have them whenever I feel like. Usually, I try to keep it like a, a few times a week, and that's it. A few okay. times a week, here and there. Okay. Yeah. And that, I think that's good for your mental health as well. <laughs> for sure. Uh, great point. Great point. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Because it's not more about uh, you know. Uh, the the physical aspect but the mental aspect that you you actually get into this mental state that you know hey i can i can eat what i want you know mm. all right hey i want a burger i can have a burger it's okay mm. i would have it i would have a small burger and by the way maybe that's something for the future topic but even those let's say unhealthy foods that it's on in our brain you know pizza pasta burger all those stuff desserts you know i enjoy them and nowadays i make them in a healthier way yeah you know even a burger you could make it a healthier way in a stuff you know having a lot of you know mayonnaise, ma- mayonnaise you know double cheese and you know a white bread i would have a whole whole grain bread mm. and uh, more salad i would and put more salad than the whole uh, you know the meat the whole could protein. be less for fatty yeah, exactly mm. I, i would go with you know a good low fat you know beef or even a vegan mm. um, option you know, option and as you said a lot of protein and that's it you know mm. or then pizza The same thing. I don't need to, you know, go crazy with the cheese. Instead, mm. I put more protein. For mm. example, I put more uh, vegetables. Veggie, veggies, yeah. yes. And then I would have just two or three slices, mm. and then I have a good, good amount of salad next to it. Mm. In that case, I would enjoy my pizza. Mm. The calories are not too high. You know, mm. I have mentally it feels great. You know, hey, you know, let's have a pizza night. Mm. It feels great. And also, I think the whole mental aspect as well that you are not being controlled by the food. You don't go nuts when you see like pizza because if you starve yourself and you you say all the time that I'm not gonna have pizza and burger, I'm not gonna have pizza and burger, then you are thinking about pizza and burger all the time. But if you're like, hey, I will have it when I want. Right now, I don't want it. Then exactly. you feel more satisfied from the brain, I guess. It's I agree. like a brain hack as well. I agree. What about you were talking about the daily uh, accountabilities? Yeah. What do you ask? What are the list of things that you go through? Yeah. Well, usually when I uh, talk about daily accountability to mm. my clients, many people they they do not really understand what does it mean. Mm. All right. So 
let me let me tell you what mm. what it really means to my client or or to you. So um, it means that first of all, I hold my customers, my clients, my friends accountable, and I hold them uh, sorry, I hold them accountable to follow the program every single day. Mm. All right, because that's a very important thing. Because if you follow one day, don't follow the next day. You go up and down. At the end of the day, you don't get that amazing results that you deserve yeah. to get. And you promised them. And I, I have yeah. promised them, yes. So I hold them accountable to follow the program. Mm. Then second thing is that I hold them accountable to actually eat healthy and follow the nutrition program. Mm. So I ask them to send me whatever they eat on WhatsApp. And then at the end of the day, I check everything. And I love these pictures because the visual, it gives a lot of information. You mm. know, if someone just write to me that, hey, you know, I had, I had, let's say, chicken, pasta and salad. That doesn't give that much information. Yeah, it's a very vague. How much did you exactly. have? And I love those mm. pictures because I know... The, the the amount mm. you know that I can see how greasy it is I can yeah, see the exactly. topping you know I can see the topping are there sauces <laughs> on top how oily is it how much protein does it have mm. you know how much salad it has and all those stuff so they send these pictures then I give them feedback and um, it also means that you know I hold them accountable with their activities so mm. I ask them to send the report and updates of their workouts. It also means that I would make sure that every single day we are going towards their goal. It means that I would make sure that they don't give up. It means that I would make sure every day that their motivation is high. Mm. You know, How do you make sure that their motivation is high? I just ask them, hey, how do you feel today? How is your energy level and how motivated are you? You know, Give me a number from 1 to 10. Mm. I just ask them straight. How, mm. how motivated are how motivated are you? Mm. Ten highly motivated, zero motivation is dead. Mm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, then you know they give me the answer, and I would provide them with the with the support that they need. Mm. And uh, many times people they forget that why they are doing this. Mm. And obviously at the beginning of the project, I have asked them, why are you doing this? Mm. And I have all those reasons. Whenever their motivation is down, I would throw those reasons to their faces mm. that, hey, it was for this reason, this reason, and this reason that you wanted to lose weight and you wanted to change your life. Mm. Are these still you know, valid? Are these still important to you? And almost... Always, almost every time they say, oh, my God, yes, Surush, yes, I, I, I totally forgot that this was such an important, important project for me. Yes, let's go. So mm. the reasons are super important. Mm. But yeah, this is the this is the daily accountability, basically. So like, they send you the picture of the food. Yes, they tell updates you updates of the workouts. Workout. So they tell you like all the sets and Yes, yeah, so mm. because I provide them with the mm. with the workout programs, it could be you know, uh, obviously these are all personalized. Mm. I I offer you know high end coaching, so it's not just the printed program. It's designed for you. So mm. uh, for some people, it's a body weight program at home. For some people, it's a gym workout. For some yeah. people, it's a Pilates. It's a, a yeah, it's yeah. A depending on the, depending yeah, on yeah. what they want and yeah, what yeah. is good for their lifestyle. And they report those activities that, hey, mm. Surush, you know, one gym workout done. Yeah. Hey, Surush, the second upper body workout done, mm. you know, okay. so that I can actually follow their activity level as mm. well. And if I see that, hey, they haven't gotten the workouts done, I would remind them, hey, what happened to your workout? You mm. haven't reported any, you know. Mm. So somehow to there is that extra push always. And believe me, it's good. Mm. You see, when you are you are making a promise. Let's assume that Muttari is starting to change his life without any support, without a coach. Mm. You make a promise, just like many other people, that, hey, from tomorrow, Monday, I'm going to change my life. Mm. Monday comes, you do good, you get started, but then Tuesday, your motivation is down. For some reason, you're mm. so busy, you're, there is hectic lifestyle, you know, you're busy at work, and 
it's so easy to break the promise because it's just the promise is between you and yourself. Mm. Isn't it? Mm. And nobody's to, watching. Nobody no, knew about the promise. I mean, it's mm. the easiest promise to break. Mm. There is no guilt because mm. it's you and you. You have just talked inside your brain. Mm. All right. Most probably you have not even written it down anywhere. You've Arse. just like mm. thought about it. I'm going to start on Monday. Mm. You know? And then, uh, so in your brain, on your you know thoughts, you have made the decision. And then immediately when it gets hard, just you break the promise because, hey, you know, I'm just too busy. Mm. You don't feel um, any any guilt or any pressure or any... You don't feel that uh, accountable to follow. Obligation to follow. Yes, you're not obligated mm. to, to follow. When you have that coach, mm. at least, you know, there is some sense of obligation that, oh my mm. God, what do I tell? What will what? the coach yeah. think of me? Yeah. You know? I made a promise to Surush. I will look like a loser. You yeah, know? I've made a promise that I'm going to do my best and I'm going to do my workout today. Mm. It would be very bad if I tell him. And I can also relate that whenever I used to have like a school assignment or something like that. So yeah. if we had like a group assignment, I would give my 100% because I was always thinking about the other person. Yeah. I was thinking like, hey, in my team, yeah. there might be people who want to ace this test or whatever. Yeah. So I don't want to be the reason that they are not acing because they want to follow their dream. So I would, you know, put my best performance and try my utmost. But if... If the subject was not so interesting to me, yeah. then I would just slack. But if I had like other people, you know, relying on me or my performance, I would be more, you know, like uh, sharp in my, in my thing. So I think the similar kind of thing works. There is a in... little pressure and yeah. little pressure is always good. Yeah, little pressure is always good. I, I, I do agree. So what, what did happen? Like you were a student and now you're suddenly a master when did this transition happen? So how did your yeah. your fitness career, <laughs> you, yeah. it started when you were not satisfied with yourself and you were uh, yeah. having your friend as your coach and there were ups and downs. Yeah. How did you get up from the downs or what kind of downs did you have? Was it the food or, you know? Yeah. Uh, so again, we go back to 2009 when I decided to take the first step and I... I lost 40 kilos mm. and uh, so I graduated from computer science, mm. totally, you know, totally different field mm. and uh, I used to sit, you know, a lot behind the computers and uh, I I was into, you know, making 3D and animations mm. and uh, so when you're talking computers, 3Ds, animations, it means spending a lot of time sitting and staring at the screen. And that was obviously one of the reasons combined with all those, you know, eating disorders that I mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, to, to make me, you know, so overweight. So when I decided to lose weight, um, after losing that 40 kilos, it felt so amazing. I mean, the feeling, the feeling was so great. Energy level. Energy level. Went confidence. Confidence, self-esteem everything everything my life changed you know for good mm -hmm. and I, I was totally a new person and the feeling was just so awesome that i never went back to computers that's first of the first thing i said that hey I, I like i would never you know work again as you know um, just sitting just sitting you know as a, you know as a developer or you know making animations and uh, I want to help other people to actually get the same feeling. Did you have less social anxiety? Uh, I'm just thinking because now you said like you you feel more comfortable around people to your previous life when you were having the 40 kilo with you. Yeah. I mean, maybe some yeah, level. Yeah. Definitely to some some level, yeah. you know. I I feel more comfortable to be mm. around the around people, mm. um, and it comes again, you know, to the confidence, mm. you know, and uh, yeah, that's basically how the whole thing started. Mm. I I felt great, and I said that hey, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to help other people to change their life because I know how amazing it is, and 
after that one year of training myself, then I said that, you know, all right, I'm going to go and study to become a personal trainer. And, um, you know, I did all kinds of courses on, on training, on nutrition, advanced courses, on both of them working out and nutrition. And, uh, you know, since then, now it is, uh, 2000, let's say 2010, it's uh, almost more than 10 years that mm. I have been coaching people and I have been fortunate enough to help hundreds of people to change their life. And uh, you have competed as well in, in this. Yeah, ima years. imagine, imagine mm. from from a person, you know, with a big belly mm. behind, you know, sitting behind the desk. I turned into a, you know, a professional competitor. I went, I went and I competed. And uh, yeah, it, it's just amazing. One thing that I always tell my clients um, is the fact that, you know, when you change your life, mm -hmm. when you actually lose that much weight, it's not only about, you know, the, the body, the, the shape, but it really affects the whole life because... Uh, it's it's an achievement, all right? It's it's a huge achievement. Mm. And I personally, even up to this day, and I'm sure forever, um, I always think, you know, whenever there is a task, whenever there is something, some challenge in front of me, I always relate it to, to that challenge. I say, hey, come on. Mm. I was a person who you know, who who lost 40 kilos. Mm. I was a person who, you know, who did something great, who achieved such a great result. Of course, I can do this too. You know, mm. I, I put the same approach to my business. It has helped me in everything. So whatever I want to do, you know, I, I say, hey, come on, I did that. I can do this too. And, and this, I, I, I always tell to my clients mm. and they have also used this approach and it has helped them in their personal life, professional life, and everything. When you turn your past negatives into positive, basically. Yeah. Because being overweight is not a positive thing. And then you create the story uh, that you tell to yourself. And, you know, I, I totally understand that. Yeah. It's like whenever you, the, the more you win, mm. the more you win. You mm. know, like mm. when once you win, it's more likely that you're going to win again and win again because it's like whatever the quality you need to win yeah you know them and you just follow them and it, they kind of multiply yeah, would yeah, you say yeah exactly yeah, it's yeah. Being, like because it's a lot of uh, mindset thing as well exact exactly <laughs> mindset because you're thinking that you know hey i was successful with that i can be successful here as well mm. i achieved that i can achieve this too you know so it's just that mindset and uh, you keep winning. I think a lot of people don't think about, you know, whenever we think about health and wealth. Yeah. The whole, you know, they're very similar. An idea that I have been thinking in my own head. Yeah. That would I take a million euros and you know, lose a hand or leg, I couldn't walk or, you know, like, you know, these funny ideas yeah. that you kind of go through your head. I know. And I think, you know, health is one of the biggest wealth you can have. For sure. Because imagine you have millions of euros, but you can't climb on the top of the mountain or to see a, a, amazing views or you don't have a good enough of a health to travel. Yeah. Then you lose a big part of you the exactly. health or you can't walk simply you can't just yes uh, you can't just walk yeah because of overweight because there's a, and you can't do something about it yeah that's even like a sadder story a lot of people live their life like that and obviously everyone has the right to live the way they want but it would be really sad for me so i think and and with your body you create your wealth right and we don't whatever um because i never got anyone to instruct me on my fitness journey and yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking right now that maybe I should because it's so hard to do this alone when you are with your thoughts and I don't know about other people's mind but my mind sometimes is really negative towards myself yeah. I, I'm I'm very like um I'm much more easy going with other people's but when it comes to myself and you know when I critique myself I'll just beat the hell out of myself, you know, yeah. and, and, and it doesn't really help. 
it doesn't help me to get where I want to go. Yeah. Fitness wise, health wise or whatever the goals are. Yeah. And uh, whenever I was thinking about, okay, maybe I should get a coach. Yeah. Then I think like, oh, I don't want to spend this money. I could do other things. I could buy nice things with this money instead yeah. of giving it to this guy who's taking yeah. my money. But we never think about investing on health, investing on, on, and it's not just the food that you're telling us to have or the workouts that, hey, do X sets of squats or pull-ups or this and that. It's, it's much broader than that. Yeah. And how, like, you went straight to the coaching I never thought, like, I have started many times my fitness journey, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. to speak. But I never thought about, like, getting a coach. Yeah. How did you just go straight up to the coach? What, what was the idea behind it? Well, did no, you ever th I, think that, okay, I can do it on my own? Uh, the thing is, um, I tried a few times before hiring co a coach mm -hmm. myself on my own with different kind of programs. And I failed. Mm. That's that's uh, you know um, that's the the reality. And then after a few times failing, because I remember that I started and it was again one of these really harsh diets, and uh, you know I had motivation, and then I lost some four or five kilos, and again I couldn't keep up. It came back. I tried another diet. I lost some kilos. It came back. Then I said that hey, you know. I really want this so badly, so let me ask for help. Then I hired, I hired a coach, and um, you know, uh, yes, I agree that you know, uh, it's it might sound like a big investment at the beginning hiring a coach, but but I could you know never be happier with the result that I got that I got uh, from working out with the coach, and it was the best investment of my life. I mean, it changed my life totally. Mm. It really changed my life. And so far, as I said, I have I have helped hundreds of people and I've never seen anyone regretting their investment. You know, mm. it turned, it's one of those investments that it's going to turn into the best investment of your life. Mm -hmm. Because uh, let's, let's face it, Motage, mm. like you have a goal and I would ask you, Two, two simple questions, all right? Mm. You know, what is the worst thing that can happen to you if you don't invest and if you don't ask for help? What is the worst thing? So that's one thing that I always ask my clients. You know, people, they say, hey, you know, um, my I have high blood pressure already. You know, it's going to get worse. I'm already, you know, you know, I'm already struggling from, you know, uh, walking or playing with my kids. It's going to get worse or I can't already sleep. I can't, you know, I have this problem, that problem, and it's going to get worse, 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 worse. Mm. All right. Then I asked them the second question. What is the worst thing that it can happen to you? If you take this and if you do this, if you invest this, the what word, is the worst thing? I think it's you lose money because you don't do anything yourself. You lose that money, mm. isn't it? Mm. Now just compare it. Mm. We, which one do you rather choose? Mm. I would rather, you know, choose the 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 uh, the second one mm. that you know I would invest. And the worst thing is that I lose the money because on the, if you don't do it, mm. the the you know the worst thing is that. You would never reach your goal and you would never achieve basically your your dream. Let's mm. put it that way. Because I, I believe that all of us, we deserve to have a healthy body. All of us. Mm. Obviously, there are some people that, you know, they have some, you know, unfortunately, they have some diseases or something that... Genetical. Yeah, that yeah. They, they just... They just can't have that healthy body. But for majority of us, mm. we really deserve to have a normal, healthy body. And mm. it's a shame if we don't get it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Because, you know, I remember when I came back from the army and I was really lean because the army tortured us. Yeah. I'm just kidding. And I, I did feel better when I woke up in the morning and I, you know, I, I was having a six pack and everything. I was like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. But it didn't stay for long because the army had like a crazy drills and everything. So they really worked us out or to the end level. 
I, I, I did feel better. I did feel better, much yeah. better than 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 when. Uh, and I do remember when uh, there was a times in my life that I was more overweight than currently, um, and there was a constant like uh, anxiety, like a pressure, constant like bad feeling, and no no energy to do anything or motivation. It it's a terrible feeling. It's yeah. a terrible feeling and. And if I could get that away, yeah. But but the problem is, it's there is no cheat code. There is nothing like, hey, I pay you and change me, transform me into a, you know, good-looking guy yeah. with the high energy. Yeah, I have to do the work as well. For sure. For sure. <laughs> and, and I think that's where a lot of people, you know, like, hey, I'm paying and I'm also doing the work. <laughs> yeah. There is yeah. no shortcuts to that, is it? No, there is no <laughs> shortcut. I always tell my mm. clients that, hey, it's a teamwork. Mm. It's really a teamwork. When I start with you, mm. if you do, sorry, if you don't do your best, mm. we're not going to hit those goals. We, we're not going to get to those targets. Yeah. And it goes the same with me. If you do your best and I do not provide you, you know, all the support that you need, all those information that you need in order for you to go forward, mm. again, you're not going to get that best result. So it's definitely a teamwork. You need to work for it. I need to work for it. But whenever a coach and a and a client work out like work together mm. and put 100 mm. percent together then basically that's when the magic would happen and having a coach is honestly it's super important i mm. always tell people that stop being arrogant and stop thinking that you know everything yourself egocentric you're yeah. just thinking about yourself all yeah the time. i mean like be okay to ask for help. Yeah. It's, there is nothing wrong with it. I mean, like even the most successful people, they have coaches. Mm. I mean, like the, the guy, he's, you know, he's, a, he's winning Olympics mm. and he has a coach, mm. you know. Um, so there is nothing wrong with having a coach. Yeah. And also, yeah, I'm thinking about any kind of sports where individual or group sport, you, you work with the coach and the coach kind of gives the oversight the coach sees the player in a different way than the player see himself yeah yeah and sometimes the coach has a realistic approach than the player itself exactly and still up to date up to this date even though i'm coaching as i said hundreds of people mm -hmm. i myself have a coach mm -hmm. both in 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 fitness and also in my professional professional life as well because i believe that people they cannot actually reach their maximum potential unless they are coached by someone. Mm. I mean, you cannot reach your maximum potential if you, you do not have a coach by your side. Someone says it, I cannot take the credit for it. Someone says said, <laughs> said this. So, yeah, but um, it's so precious, basically, to have a coach and by your side. And also the way, uh, you know, the way people see themselves is not the reality. That's not very realistic, is it? When you look at yourself from the mirror, you will pay attention to things that I won't pay attention when I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's correct. And <laughs> there, there are so many different things uh, when you think about, you know, why is it good to have a coach? That's, yeah. that's one, of, one, of, one of them. And, uh, you know, um, a coach also would... As I said, you know, all those accountability and stuff mm. that we, we already covered it. But more than that, you know, as a human being, as, as a, like people, they want to be comfortable. Yeah. It's, just, it's just like within us, man. Like we, we just want to take the easy way, you know, that like if there is a little bit pressure, if it is a little bit hard, mm. there is a little bit challenge, you know, your brain constantly says, hey, calm down. Like, slow down, you know, take it easy. Take it's, a cheesecake. <laughs> it's okay, just grab a piece of, you know, cheesecake. It's yeah. okay, just go for one more pizza slice. Yeah. It's just within our nature. Mm. That's why we need to have, you know, another value is that, you know, a coach would give you that extra push so that you don't always take that easy step easy road basically yeah and have like a fresh pairs of eyes definitely yeah, definitely yeah for sure. sure if someone wants to reach out to you how where would you tell them like if someone wants to be coached by you how does that happen 
So they can they can either uh, reach out to me on Instagram, Coach Surush. That's my Instagram ID, ID or then www.coachsurush.com. And I will leave the links down below the YouTube channel. And also, if you're listening this from the podcast uh, apps, it will be in the description as well. Awesome. So people can find you from there. Is there anything else? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, I just wanted to say thank you, Mottaki, for having me today here. And uh, for all those people that they want to actually get started, they are, you know, where... I used to be 10 years ago. Mm. They have a goal to, you know, to get into a better shape. I just want to encourage you and say that, you know, uh, you can definitely get into the best shape of your life because you deserve to be healthy and you, you should be doing that. And the most important step is to get started, just like what I did. So just get it started. And again, don't be afraid to ask for help. That's it. Keep the ball rolling, so to speak. Keep the ball rolling, you know, like don't stop the ball. Just keep going forward, right? But that being said, thank you very much for coming here. It's Corona time, so we don't shake hands. (laughs) Obviously, we have two meters distance, so it's okay. We just, you know, (laughs) it is what it is. But hey, thank you for coming and all the best, uh, you know, Best wishes for you. Are Cheers. you going to compete in the near future? Do you have that in mind, or um, n- not this year at least? Not this no. year. I'm I'm really focusing on my uh, business and helping people. And uh, uh, competing was a really good experience for me. Mm. Just to again have that knowledge, so that when a customer would say that, "Hey, Surj, I'm going to compete," mm. you know, what are the things? What are cons and pros so yeah. that I have gone through it yeah. so it was more like that uh, but uh, not any more competition at least this year yeah so that's very nice I like that uh, that you have been the fat person and now you're fit and yes. then you have been into the competition so you have the experience to you know uh, help someone with the competitions so um, yes so if anyone uh, would like to get to know you follow the links below and i think this was it thank you Surus. thanks Montaki. thanks bye thank you Shurush, for being in this podcast and sharing your story sharing loads of really valuable information i'm going to personally use these tips and tricks to better myself to get myself into better shape so should you or maybe if you want to you know do what you want But anyway, until next time, bye.